Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel once again. And now I just want to thank my early subscribers that have been watching since I restarted my desire to do YouTube. I really do appreciate you being the first to click through and watch the commentary. This silliness will get even better and definitely catch on on the internet. My goal is to reach all of y'all in some way. Now if this is your first look, please subscribe because I plan to send my Talk to the Hand t-shirt free to a few of my lucky subscribers soon. You just want to be one of them. Now let's just jump right into the clown show. Kids say and do the darndest stuff part three. Yeah, had to do it. Let's talk about it. Students were asked to imagine that they lived at the same time as Abraham Lincoln. And what would they want to say to him or ask him? Well, Sharon wants to tell old Abe to just stay home and not go to that play. Hey, Sharon, I think Abe wishes he had met you at least once. In our class, when... <laughs> In our, in our class, Wendy, in our class, Wendy was asked to copy the picture of the reindeer. Well, Wendy has a different idea of what copying means. She's from that new generation alpha that only knows how to do this. Okay, Jonathan, give us ten words that you know how to spell right. Come on, Jonathan, is that fair? teacher gave you correct spelling for seven of them, so you actually only gave us three. I guess Jonathan is sure to become the world's best car salesman, hiding the truth in the details. A teacher was using hyperbole as a tool to get her students to expound on their writing. Okay guys, exaggerate on this one. I got so many clothes on, I feel as big as a whale. Nelson wrote, oh, oh Miss Anderson, here's one. I, I got so many clothes on, I feel like your mom. Ooh, Nelson. You call him Ms. Anderson's mom a wheel on a slide? Or are you practicing for when you become a professional comedian on the Comedy Central after school detention lockup version? A quiz on pattern detection? Wow, the school system is introducing a lot of rigor at a young age these days. But I don't know if this is always a good thing. The question basically asks seven ways that a brain is like a cantaloupe. Weird question. Huh? And even a weirder answer. Unless you're Hannibal Lecter. Bobby has four dimes and Amy has 30 pennies. Hey, Kenny, which child has more money? Good job, son. How'd you figure that one out? Please show us your thinking. Oh, I can see your thinking now. And I can see your mind is in a cloud. A high school teacher may have put a foot in her mouth when she gave these students proven question in his 11th grade questionnaire. One of the questions asked, what is your pet peeve? Ronald let her know by saying, hey teach, that right there, all your typos. You know, spell check works for numbers too, Miss Williams, I hear. Now we all know that time when we didn't have any clue on what the answers were to a test. So what'd we do? Yeah, we Christmas treated. We just went down to test to mark anything. But Ronnie was way smarter than any of us. On his true and false test, he really thought outside the box. You go, Ronnie. He wrote his answers in a way that the teacher had to wonder if he was saying true or false, because his words could pass for either. Is Ronnie trying to tell us something about where he's headed in the future about this ambiguity? Yeah, critical thinking and problem solving. Okay, Michael, suppose you want to build a house on this land and protect its natural resources. What could you do? And how would you protect the natural resources? Uh, Mr. Jones, you do know this is America. You can just forget about that house. <laughs> Mr. Jones kind of knew he was exactly right, too. Now, we all know what this is, I hope. But in biology class, the teacher was teaching the schematics of a woman's vagina and the importance for girls to know about pap smears. Yet the teacher probably should have thought about it twice before giving a copy to Victor, who had already developed a few freakish tendencies with the girls. I thought I saw a putty cat. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. This shows that old school is out. In science class, the teacher asked the students to briefly explain what hard water was. Well, tell the lady, Melvin. Okay, lady. Ice. <laughs> but if Melvin is not careful, he'll probably continue that pattern and grow up being a man who didn't know the difference between hard and soft cocaine and end up doing life for possession of the wrong texture of an illegal drug. 
In math class, Peter showed that he was just too lazy to expand this expression. But he did get pretty creative with his attempt. Come on, teach. He did expand it, didn't he? Hi, students. I would like you to express yourself today in words. What is love? Jose wrote, Baby, don't hurt me no more. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But to be honest, I never really understood that song. Back in the day, I'd be at the club thinking, Hey, this guy's getting beat up a little too much by a woman and a little too often. Okay, students, write this question down. Would you rather be stuck on an island alone or with a person that you hate? Now, I'm looking for innovative answers, so think about it. David, what you got? Well, teacher, I would rather be on an island with someone I hate so I'd have something to eat. Hey, David, uh, uh, would you happen to have a dead granddaddy named Jeffrey, please? Yeah, spelling is still important. Samantha, please look at the sentence and make the corrections. Put on your raincoat and boots. What's wrong with that? Uh, Mrs. Roundtree, ladies do not poop. And speaking of spelling, well, I, I'll let y'all tell uh, little Erica who the 16th president really was. Now, please write something you like about your school. Uh, I, I'm going to let y'all tell Sarah, too. Okay, a very important science question. Why are there three rings on Saturn? Well, Angelique knows. Because God liked Destiny Child so much, he put a ring on it. But Miss Thompson wanted to let Angelique know this wasn't about Destiny's child. And there was no single ladies involved either, girl. <laughs> now, lady, this is why you got to check your children's homework. If Miss Keisha had just checked little Vanessa's homework, she could have prevented herself from being put on blast. Now we clearly know how Miss Keisha is affording all of little Vanessa's jewelry and baby fat designs and stuff. But Miss Keisha tried to call in saying this was really a picture of her working at Home Depot with all the customers gathered around trying to buy the last snow shovel available. Yeah, okay, Miss Keisha. You keep on bending over and selling them snow shovels, then. Hey, thank y'all for coming back and keep coming back. And if you enjoy the humor, then let me know. Hey, I'm on an important mission. Y'all check me out later next time. Oh, Keisha mama knows she wasn't holding on to no shovel pole in that picture. She works the poles all right and give lap dances for $20 too. <laughs> <laughs>